Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Ask the Expert. We're so pleased that you're with us this week. We have a really uh, timely topic. Um, so I've got my good friend and business associate. I mean that only in the sense that we are good referral partners, no, no financial or management ties. This is Pragya Mishra, and she is the owner, and she's a landscape architect. She's the owner of Artscapes, um, and they work throughout the DMV. And she's ridiculously talented. You're going to hear more later. We actually had her come out once before um, to talk with us about increasing your outdoor living space so that you have more space to use since more people are working and schooling from home. So you can always revisit that on our Facebook page or YouTube, or we can send you a link if you're interested. She has some really, really good ideas. So Pragya, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me in. Pragya is our latest Ask the Expert expert. And um, we started this series during the pandemic a few months ago to get good information out about local businesses and good information that could help our clients or anybody watching with what we hope are topical issues. Um, and if you've got any ideas, certainly let me know or Jennifer or Pragya, we're happy to tailor the information that we bring every other week. So we're every other week now. Um, I'm a realtor with McInerney Associates and I'm out there interfacing with small businesses all the time. And I meet so many talented people like Pragya, which is one of the reasons that we like doing this. So um, we'll hear more from Pragya in a bit. We've got some specific questions for her. And if we get to the end and um, we've got a little bit of time, if you send us some questions you have, um, we will be happy to answer those. Uh, before I share a little bit more about Pragya, yeah, I did want to give a local real estate update. Um, things are looking good. Uh, I know there's mixed news out there on all kinds of fronts, but um, total new contract activity for last week, the week we completed a couple of days ago, was up 27.7% throughout the six jurisdictions that we track. Um, so that's, you know, D.C., Montgomery County, Prince George's, Northern Virginia, which is Arlington and Fairfax County, and then cities of Alexandria, Falls Church, and what am I missing? Fairfax, and then Loudoun and Prince William counties. Um, so pretty good area there, 27.7% increase in contract activity compared to the same time last year is humongous. And we're pretty much having our spring market right now because our spring market was I don't want to say canceled, but it was greatly diminished when we normally experience it. So um, I do want to share a couple of highlights that last week, Washington, D.C. had an astounding 71% increase in the number of newly ratified contracts. That is ridiculous. Um, and Northern Virginia was at 32.2. So um, our, our lowest increase, which was still an increase, was Prince William at 6.9, which is still fantastic, considering we're up still dealing with a pandemic, uh, it's pretty impressive. So we have a lot of uh, demand out there and we have very motivated sellers still selling and buyers still buying. And I like to kind of every other week share with you anecdotal information and then, um, and then I'll give you some statistical based info. I had a couple of clients who were lucky enough to buy properties this past week and go under contract. And I don't even know how given these stats, we had the miracle of not competing on those offers. It was unbelievable. So it was like a blessing last week. Um, so that's a little bit about the market. If you want to know more about your specific area or an area you're interested in, please reach out to me or Jennifer, and we're happy to get you some really good fact-based information. And without delaying further, I want to uh, welcome Pragya. Um, we're so happy that you could join us again, Pragya. And here's why we asked you to come. We are at the time of year when we have lots of summer storms and they're fast moving and they dump a ton of water very quickly. They can be very damaging, both in terms of um, trees and microbursts and erosion. And a lot of times those are leading to property damage. And that's on my mind because I get calls from clients saying, I need help with the gutters. I need help with the landscaping. I need a retaining wall. Uh, we're having erosion. We've got water in the basement. And the water in the basement we hear way too often this time of year. Um, and a lot of times, as I know from home inspectors and people like you, it's pretty easy to solve. Not always, but often. And so I 
even though we had you on a couple months ago, I really wanted to have you back out because although your name is Pragya Mishra, your nickname is the Drainage Queen. <laughs> yes, My mom and dad are proud. <laughs> your drainage queen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I think it is a much needed skill set, and I'm happy to know somebody who's a queen of drainage problems. So, and I know my clients are too. Um, in fact, you solved a big problem for a good friend of mine recently, and uh, they've been battling issues for I think she said over five years, right? Yes, it's, and, it's an ongoing issue. Yeah, and and you were able to resolve the issue. You know, knock on wood. Um, but these kinds of things take some diligence. People really have to um, stay on top of what's going on in their yard. And it's funny because right before we started this, you were saying a really good idea is yeah. during a rainstorm, walk yeah. around umbrella, I, right? When it's raining a lot, uh, interestingly, this is something I got from my mother and my grand grandfather. When it rained, they're out there with umbrellas, looking at your gutters, looking at how the flow of water is. That's the best time to get to know the drainage of your house. You know, how is it working or not? So if it's out there, I love rain, but if you love rain, if you don't love rain, get umbrella or raincoat, get out there and walk around and just, just study what's happening because you can learn a lot. You know, it's really interesting you say this because I was mentioning to you that a window well had become askew and some water had gotten into a property we were talking about. Um, and it was, it was simple. It just needed to be clipped back to the house. But you're right. I think about walking around and I'm going to do that around my house and, and, you know, this other property um, and just see, you know, how the water is flowing. And I think a lot of times as a real estate agent, I will see where the gutter connects to the downspout and it comes down. And sometimes there are areas where that's become disconnected. Like maybe where it connects to an underground pipe or maybe where the little uh, downspout turns by the splash block yep. and see that. And, and it's funny. And I'll say to my sellers, you know, this just needs to be reconnected. We've got to make sure that there's no moisture getting in. And they'll say, we didn't even know that. I mean, we had no idea that was happening. And I think we just, we get used to living in our places and we stop seeing them, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I me mean, as a trained I, that those are the things I look at immediately and I, I start seeing people are usually they call me and they they have a major problem I go there and I'm like oops it's just a small downspout issue downspout is not connected well or some pump is not connected well and the water just going back back right back in your, in your basements or inside the house you know um I, I think all too often you and I get the calls. When I get the calls, it's because, and who do you know? And when you get the calls, they already, you know, they know you or you've been, you're very popular on some community listservs as a drainage queen. So, <laughs> yeah, well, thanks to people like you and a couple of my uh, networking partner. Um, and I just chuckle when they, when, when they call me and they say, yeah, I, we found you as a drainage queen. And I just chuckle. And yeah, but that's my nickname in few communities out there. <laughs> You know, I think it's great because when I get those calls, something bad has often already happened. I'll never forget when I got from a client, she said, my carpet is floating on a few inches of water. And I mean, at that point, you have a lot of damage, a lot of damage. Um, so that's very obvious. You know, people know they have a problem if they go in their basement and the carpet's floating. But like, let's talk about more subtle things to be aware of leading up to that, right? So how does someone know if they have an issue when it's not that obvious, you know, but but um, I guess there are, there are obvious telltale signs and then there are hints and things we should be, should realize will lead to a problem. In fact, Jennifer just put up some images for us. So Pragya, what should we look for? You know, it's again, just like I was saying, when you when it's raining, step out there because you you you're going to notice uh, like the picture Jennifer has used there overflowing gutters. If the gutter is just overflowing, it's not working. Or if you look at downspout and you see downspout, the water is not going in the pipe that's supposed to go. The water is just puddling right by your house. Or you could have, I mean, you might not have bought it but you might when it rains a lot you might have a uh, water view property a waterfront property 
you know, with just a lot of puddling around in places near the house. Uh, it's a very small thing, but when you look, you'll find it. You will see it. Um, so those are the things you want to pay attention to. Again, downspouts, gutters overflowing, water stains in the basement, um, downspout drain problem, and punning of the water. Those are usually the telltale sign. Uh, or if you which is hard because with neighborhood, it might, you might not have a problem, but your neighbor might have a problem to get the mosquitoes too. So those are the main things I'll pay attention to. You know, I, I'm glad you mentioned that actually, Pragya, because I don't know if you'll rem you'll probably remember this. There was a property that you and I looked at on behalf of a client of mine who was looking to move, and this was in Alexandria, and it was a beautiful property. It had been renovated, and on either side were ponding water, stagnant water issues, um, and there was there were tons and tons of mosquitoes, yeah. and that house, the house that we were looking at, it was not selling. And I really wondered if it was because of how the properties to the left and right were maintained. You and I went and looked and remember all the bugs that were out there? Yep, and the property we were looking at was pretty nice and neat and clean, but it was yep. the two properties on the side, it was a mess. Yeah, it was yep. terrible, terrible. Well, um, I, I appreciate the hints because I think people don't always realize that the water that's not draining might be part of a bigger issue, you know, or um, something that's backing up and they need to just investigate a little further or call someone. Right. Um, it, so in your experience, what kind of problems are you seeing that are caused by poor drainage? I mean, you mentioned water in the properties, right? Water coming in basements. Right. right. What about trees? Like it, if you've got drainage issues, can that impact your trees or your tree health or stability? Um, it depends, right? I mean, trees are great because of their root system, but it depends on some trees have a very, very shallow root, um, like white pine or laven cypress and a couple of other plants. So as, as you're getting erosion problem, it will erode that, that top layer soil. And mm -hmm. it will put the tree in a little bit of more danger of falling because mm -hmm. you know, it's it's uh, affecting its root system. Um, but more than tree affecting tree, it's when you remove plants, you have to also pay attention because they are holding your ground to some degrees. So before you decide to take trees away or plants away, you, you wanna also think about what is it going to do to the water? What is it going to do to the grade? That's a great point. That's a great point. I didn't think oh, about, go ahead. One other, one other thing, and another thing to do, th look at it also, sometimes you have uh, gutters coming down and the gutters are four inch or bigger size. Pipe that's attached to the gutter will be smaller pipe. So mm -hmm. obviously the amount of water coming from the top is a lot more and then you're changing the size of the gutter. So you wanna make sure the gutters are same size or bigger or the pipe that's going underneath is bigger so the water flows out. Um, as we're talking about this and the trees and the gutters, Jennifer, can you go back to that slide that showed all of the properties um, and the overflowing gutters? I wanted to mention something. Um, is, as you're looking at this, the, the uh, image before this one, you see the picture in the middle and the upper right, that was the same property. And um, I happened to be there when a summer storm came through and we had been asked by the seller what they needed to do. And there were more trees than just that one that you see those roots on the hillside. Um, there was actually a tree that was dead that had split in half, but was somehow still upright, which was threatening the house. And we weren't sure what to do because if you took it down to your point, Prague, it looked like it was gonna destabilize that hillside. Absolutely. Um, but this was an interesting property because I talked with the people who were living there who were renters and I asked them if they had any moisture problems inside, um, which wouldn't be a far reach if you look at those photos. And they said they had rain in there, water in there every time it rained, you know, for a substantial amount of time. And they believed that they had a mold issue. Now they had not had it tested um, as renters, but they felt that they had mold in there. And often you'll get sort of a funky smell or 
you know, mold like sub, um, substance or mildew or something. So, you know, it was, it was a long neglected situation and it was really hard to figure out to your point, Pragya, because the tree was threatening the house because of the erosion. And then you've got all these roots that had, um, become above the ground and the shallow root system. But by the same token, we were concerned if you took them down, now you're destabilizing the whole hillside, right? Right. So I mean, this obviously needed some sort of retaining wall or something to deal with it. To yes. The issue. Uh, we yes. looked at this house together, didn't we? Uh, this one, we I don't think we looked at together. I ended up not, <laughs> not getting it. Hmm? I think one of the house we looked at with you, you actually suggested uh, to the client about the issues. And I, I don't know if it's the same one, but it looks very similar. Yeah. The, <laughs> for the purposes of this conversation, I was lucky enough to get these photos during the rain because that just doesn't happen very often. So um, the other picture there on the lower left is just of a creek bed showing what happens when the, the trees start to be kind of hanging out in the air because everything has eroded around them. But anyway, getting back to um, to our questions, and thanks for pulling that back up, Jennifer. I just wanted to show that while we were talking about trees. Um, Pragya, I think one of the things that happens is people, people get so concerned when they've got water in the house, rightly so, but they assume that the fix is, you know, 15, 20, 25,000, whatever it is. Um, but that's not always true, right? I mean, sometimes you can fix a problem without going to one of those expensive, um, you know, these companies that, that address it from the inside, they put a drain all around the house and sump pump and expensive waterproofing system. Sometimes you need that, but sometimes you can solve it on the outside, right? Right. And, you know, um, I've been doing this for 20 years and I've had several clients when I went in and uh, when I went to the site and they were talking about uh, waterproofing the basement, installing drain tile inside, sump pump. And sometimes you will have to get to that point. But if before you get to that point, I always tell my clients, let's look at what's causing it. Because we might be able to solve it without having to spend that much money. And if we can solve it, great. You know? um, so one of my clients were ready to actually hire a pretty big uh, foundation um, uh, waterproofing. Thing. And I went there. We went, walked in the basement. Basement had water issue going all the way to the corner and everything. And it was a rental property too. So um, I looked at it, I looked at downspout and it was just so obvious for me. The water was just coming right by the downspout. And we went there, fixed the problem for 500 bucks. So she didn't have to spend uh, you know, 20, 27,000, however, however it was. And, and I'm not knocking that out, but you might, sometimes it's necessary to do it. But if I can save my clients, 20,000 or 22,000 on waterproofing all that work. Why not? You know, so I was, I, I got so happy when I can save money with my client, but we, we solved the problem. This is a great example. I mean, this is a, a very easy to solve issue here. Jennifer's pulled up the, um, you know, a photo and then a list. So Pragya, I think that's awesome too. And that's one of the reasons I feel really good referring you because I know you'll try to find those practical solutions before they go out and spend tens of thousands of dollars. So um, I have one I want to ask you about related to one of these, but do you want to go through this list first, the common drainage problems? Absolutely. And um, what you can see in the picture, you know, a lot of times people will buy a house and they don't look at the town. They don't look at these things because kind of it's outside, it's, it's working, it's semi-working. But you see the downspout where it's dumping the water right at the foundation of the house. All we have to do is just take it away further and daylight it away from the house. You know, improperly install downspout and gutters, incorrect grading if you have the grade coming back towards the house, a runoff from the neighbors, um, or depending on, you know, sometimes you, you add landscaping that can cause water to come back. So you have to do it correctly. Roots in your drainage pipes, sur surface depression. So the, all these smaller things can cause, you know, it could be just one or a combination of all. Um, those are the most common drainage problem. And those are the first thing I look at, even if it's my client will call me for non-drainage issue because they might not be aware of drainage issues 
that's happening. So if I'm creating something beautiful for them to enjoy their uh, space, if I don't solve the drainage issue, it's not going to work at the end. Right. Okay. Well, you know, um, this, I think a lot of times people see some of these issues and I'm, I'm going to pick up on one of these and they just feel like they don't know where to go, or where to turn, which of course is where we always recommend get a, get a professional involved. Right. But one of these I wanted to hit on is runoff from your neighbor. So I've got a good friend who's got a, a hill in the backyard that comes toward the house. Um, and their neighbor behind them is up higher than them. And we're not sure, well, at least I'm not sure what in that neighbor's yard is causing the runoff into her yard. So do you have experience? I mean, have you ever had to go talk to a neighbor on behalf of a client or, or how, once it's already entering the yard, how, how do you manage that? It's, it just seems a little dicey, right? It's like the tree that overhangs your property that's the neighbors. Yes. Um, I mean, I have, I have had, I usually, let me back up. Usually if there's an issue with water coming to your yard, unless someone is doing something illegal, or even if they are dumping the water right in your property, if you are on the downhill side, there's not much you can do, but solve the problem within your property. And rather than trying to tie the drainage and stuff to the neighbor side, I always want to solve the problem within the property line. It just, sure. if, they, if they sell the property or something in the long run, you don't want that issue. So question is, um, your friend, walk, is there a place for water to go anywhere? Can we, you know, let, move the water in a right way where it can go get connected with the existing drain? If you don't have that option, which I'm actually, I'm dealing with a client of mine, where they are actually middle person. There's a top of the hill and the bottom of the hill and all water just pulling right by the fence. And now the neighbors are complaining. So, but there's no way for us to take the water somewhere. So to fix this, we're creating dry well, three different dry well system. So water gets, you know, so it's not just flowing down the hill, but it gets collected and slowly goes into the earth. It's just a dry well system. We can talk more about that, but I have to fix the problem within him because I, I, I didn't want to go to the neighbors and disturb their wall. Uh, and then the water coming from the uphill, they're going to tell us, hey, you live downhill. So not my problem. Yeah, they're you probably know, like, they're, yeah. exactly. And the same thing my clients were trying to tell the neighbor below, but he, he was nice enough. He wanted to solve the problem. You know, say, oh, so it's not my problem. This is really a, a very good lead in because one of the questions that I get, and sometimes I get confused myself between the definitions. So I'm so glad that this train of conversation is going the direction it is because I wanted to ask you, what is the difference between dry wells and a rain garden? And when might these come into play? Okay. Uh, rain gardens and dry wells are very similar. Um, system. It's pretty much you are putting a um, hole in the ground and letting the water percolate slowly. Mm -hmm. rain, garden, rain gardens are required by the county depending when you're building the new house. We can install rain gardens if you don't have enough spaces for the water to drain because right now they don't want all the water, surface water, just drain into the community. Just, you know, they want you to contain all this stuff within your property. So Rain garden, you can plant native plants on the top uh, have to maintain it. Whereas the dry well system is a little more uh, easier system where you can also put a grass on the top. You can just have a dry well underneath where water gets collected. It's, it, you can have multiple uh, collection spots where you get other collected. It's a similar thing, but the rain garden is a little more required by the county these days especially with the new homes, they don't have enough spaces to go. So it's, it's also, uh, they will come back, back by and inspect it to make sure it's working. Cause you, you know, it doesn't mean just because it's working, you have to maintain it. I think, I think the rain gardens can be very, um, attractive. And I know a lot of our native plants and flowers attract the pollinators, which is also a positive thing. So, right. I mean, rain, I gar know rain garden can be, it, good but sometimes it can be a little bit challenging because sometimes when county or you know engineers are putting it together they're not thinking aesthetic of it 
still be in the middle smack down in the middle of the yard or sometimes we're trying to do different design modern design it wouldn't go with it so you have to be creative with it um but if it's required it's required and it's it's good for nature so why not well and someone like you is good at helping with the aesthetics which is great i mean you're you have that task of having the practical side the solutions oriented side and the aesthetic side which is great exactly exactly if you ha if you have a problem let's fix it and make it pretty at the same time it's a win-win right so a dry well you might not necessarily see a rain garden you're going to know is there right right so then also there there are french drains trenches swales and then i always call it the wrong thing dry creek beds which like also bed. mm -hmm. very attractive too they have like usually the river rocks right right it's river rocks which can be tied with the rain garden too you know uh, some people actually have requested me to design a drywall. They didn't have a drainage issue, so I'm like, why? <laughs> but um, but there is a French drain, a drywall, a dry creek bed, or just you know underground uh, drainage system, or just creating a swale too. It all depends on what's the issue we're trying to solve. Uh, with drainage, sometimes I will I will say I I would like to move the water on surface if possible. It's uh -huh. just the way it's easier, maintenance wise, long term wise, it's just easier to move the water. But if we can't, then we can get into, uh, you know, like the French drain and um, French drain system or dry creek system. And it could be a combination of all of them, too. Uh, it's it's all about what will work, you know, what what problem we're trying to solve and what look we're trying to get to. OK, so these are images that aren't we have your logo in the upper left hand, but I want to just clarify to people, these are not, these are not images of your work. These are images that we used as examples. Um, so uh -huh. some of the photos on here today I took and some we got from other sources, but I just, this was for the point of illustration. I just want to yeah. say that because Prague may just, also, Sorry, um, Anne. May I also tell you one thing, which I think it's, it's really funny how a lot of people think the French drain system was originated in France. It had nothing to do with France. It was invented by an American man. The name like French. Wait, say that. Um, and it's a modern day drain system. The French drain. Can you hear me? Yeah, it went out for a second. So say that again. Okay, you know the French drain. A lot of people think it's actually it was invented in France, originated in France. Contrary to popular belief, it is nothing. It has nothing to do with France, just like French fries. It was invented by an American man by the name of Henry Flag French. That's ah. what's called the French drain. It's just a little little tidbit. I just think it's so funny. Like everybody's like, "Oh, did it start in France?" I'm like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a versatile system for dealing with all kinds of drainage problems. You know, it just disperses water over a large area through a very perforated pipe. The pipe has to be surrounded with the right materials, uh, depending on what kind of pipe. There's easy flow, there are PVC pipe, all kinds of pipe to work on that. But I just wanted to share that uh, little fact about the French drain. Well, it just reminds me, I had a client from, um, let's see, he was Belgian and his wife was French. And he was so funny because he said to me one time, he said, you Americans are the only people I know in the world who invite the water in and then ask it to go back out. <laughs> you know, our, our, it was a discussion about a sump pump, and I thought that was so funny. Um, and sump pump you use... Has, go ahead. Sump pump use, you You see all kinds of houses. Have you noticed, like, they're... Oh, sump pump are used so often these right. days. And sump pump should not be running constantly. They should not have to be... 10 sump pump running in a house. If we can prevent the water from coming into the house, why not do I pay for the electrical bill, all of that bill and the constant running of the sump pump? Yeah, so, maybe burning out a motor with it running like that. Right. You no, know, that's a really good point. I think that directing the water away from the home and trying to keep your foundation dry should be a number one. The sump pump should only be a backup, a precautionary measure, right? Exactly. So, um, I think I, I know we're running out of time and I have like so many more questions I wanted to ask you, but, um, I was wondering, Pragya, just because sometimes it, it takes a little 
investigation to make sure you've got the problem solved. Have you ever had a situation where it took several efforts or attempts or different strategies before you resolved a water issue? You know, I know that you're very good actually at identifying it the first time. In fact, we have a common client who had a couple of other vendors out before you who could not resolve a problem. You went and it was resolved like that. Um, but like, have you ever had a problem that sort of stumped you where you were like, this should resolve it, but yet it didn't. And maybe there was something else going on. I'm just curious. Um, I'm trying to think about, I mean, usually what, when we're doing drainage, uh, fix, there's no, I mean, we try to do the best we can to see if we can solve it hundred percent. Um, and usually with the study or from homeowners <laughs> feedback on how much water they're getting, uh, we have we have added a secondary layer of drainage, but nothing that we have to scrap it completely. I guess I'll give it give a give a shout out to Virginia Tech for training me as an architecture program on looking at the drainage properly. But and I also have a really good partner who installs all the drainage things. So I always have him over and we put our two heads together to fix it because I would like to get it fixed. But we have added secondary layer stuff around just to prevent more water from coming but nothing where i've been stumped right okay right. like it's like we could do ask the expert we could do stump the expert and maybe have people call in with questions sometime we can uh, do that absolutely i mean one of i knew we were running our, like our mutual client had a sump pump running constantly in her in her basement constantly because her basement was sunken in and she was just frustrated with the whole thing so we create a dry creek bed, move the water away, and some pump only runs when it rain, heavy rains now. You know, when it, there's heavy rain. So it that's just makes me happy when I could when I hear things like that. I guess that, that's what makes me a drainage queen. But when the drainage is solved, one I, time. I heard the drainage queen. Um, <laughs> so I just, I want to say to people who I asked probably that last question, you know, and I wasn't, I really wasn't trying to stump you. I was just curious, but just remember your, the lay of your land can change. Your neighbor could build a McMansion and it changes the drainage. You, you could have had a previous drainage problem that you solved and then you could have a new drainage problem. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got lots of properties being built. We've got accessory dwelling units. Now people are building she sheds. We've got, uh, you know, we, when the weather's extreme, it affects the trees and we lose trees sometimes. So there are or a large development where they like hundreds of trees. Now you what? pull the water, like what, where the developers will come in and take buy a land and remove all the trees. Yeah. In um, McLean, they remove this huge wooded area, change the whole game on how much how the water was coming down. Right. So it's it, guys, it's it's not always something in your control. It can be something beyond your control. You just need a good professional like Pragya to help you work through it and realize, you know, what the issues are and what we can do to, to help you. So I, I really could ask more questions, but I don't want us to go too long. Here's what I want to say. If you need a drainage queen, uh, I only know one and her name's Pragya and she's with us today. It's her contact info. If you forget the information here, you can always reach out to me or Jennifer um, and we will be happy to connect you. I can speak from experience and the clients I've referred to Pragya and tell you that uh, I get lots of accolades about her and her work. Aesthetically, her work is beautiful. But today we were talking because in a very practical sense, she can help you solve problems. And I just, I can't speak highly enough about her. Um, so Pragya, I want to say thank you again for joining us today. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for always thinking of me too. Of course, and I want to remind you uh, that this will be available on YouTube and on our Facebook page. And if you ever need a link to it, you've got drainage problems, you know someone else who does, we're happy to forward you the link. We want you to spread the good information around. So um, we'll ask if you wouldn't mind doing that. And then I also wanted to say, I've got a glare up here, sorry. Um, I also wanted to say if you need a real estate expert or know somebody who does, I hope you'll pass along my information. I'm always happy to help. Um, and lately I've been getting people who have been asking, do you know somebody in a different city or part of the country and I'm able to make good connections? So if you've got somebody who needs help somewhere else and you want them to meet with somebody who's a good, ethical, smart agent, I'm happy to try to do a little bit of 
research and connect them with somebody good. So please do keep this information, pass it along. Um, don't make us your secret agents. And uh, I also wanna thank Jennifer for pulling the strings like the Wizard of Oz behind the scenes here. She does a great job putting together the slides for us and um, all kinds of information. So thank you for joining us today and we'll catch you in two weeks for another Ask the Expert. And Pragya, I uh, wish you much success with the, the storms and all your landscaping projects. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.